Hello and welcome to We Work Together, a new podcast about working in partnership to improve the health and care of people in West Yorkshire and Harrogate, and the relationships between the organisations and people involved. In this episode, Rachel Loftus, Head of Regional Health Partnerships across West Yorkshire and Harrogate, talks with Tom Reardon, Chief Executive at Leeds City Council, about how councils, the NHS and third sector are working together, the dynamic between local places and the wider health and care partnership system, and about how leaders and the idea of leadership has changed during Tom's career. How has the relationship between councils and health and care organisations evolved during the time that you've been Chief Exec at Leeds? I think it's improved um, significantly, actually, and I think part of it is not that before we were willfully ignoring each other. I think it's just the culture of um, local government and the culture of the NHS are very different and we've had to build a shared culture and that involves um, sometimes some difficult conversations and um, sometimes the silence of the big table as I would call it where people can sort of sit on the hands a bit and not really engage and go to big meetings and um, say the right things but then go off and not really change what happens in their organisation so we had to go through a bit of that and then I think we went through a real stage of um, challenging each other to get better and realising that we had to do this for the people of um, of West Yorkshire and Harrogate and, um, and that has led to I think a really improved understanding between all of us um, and Im- improved I think mutual respect for the job that each of us are are there to do um, and also a shared endeavour to to really take our partnership work into another level of what I call very active partnership where you're actually focused on getting things done and getting things to change so yeah I I think we've come a long way actually always more to do as well I think we're just at the foothills of what can be achieved. Yeah. Uh, so people often say to me when I say I work in health and care for the local authority, people say, you know, I didn't know local authorities were involved in that kind of thing. Um, so from your point of view, why do you think local government it is important to be engaged in that partnership of working at that level? I think if you asked a lot of people why they went into politics um, and what difference they wanted to make, or you asked people who'd gone into as, as officers into local government um, or the NHS, why, why they're, they're there. A lot of the time they'll say to make a difference and to make a difference to people who need the help the most. And so if you look at a range of ways that you could do that, I think there was an orthodoxy that I was part of actually maybe 15 years ago where the key to a successful life was to get a job to get a good job and if you get a good job you'll be all right because everything else will flow from that you'll get a good house you'll get a good you know your health will be better you'll live a better lifestyle and I think what's changed in the last um, 15 20 years is that that isn't the case anymore you know some people have three jobs and they're still in poverty Mm -hmm. and so the way that you can affect people's lives I think the most is through improved health and healthy lifestyles and the way that you can immediately have a an impact on that is is not just by providing um, support through the NHS. You know, it, it can come in a whole range of different ways, and that's where local government comes in because we have this great responsibility on public health, which I think was a a really really pivotal move to give that back to local government where it started, if you like, originally. Yeah. Um, and to give that extra responsibility for healthy lifestyles to people who were planners, um, highways engineers, you know, chief execs and cabinet members, the people with responsibility for social housing, for building new houses, all of those things, you know, have an impact on um, individuals' health and 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 children's social care as well. I always remember we we've done so much on children's social care and. The one question I, that Ofsted put to me that I couldn't be really positive about when we went from um, went to outstanding recently was that we still need to make sure every child in care has an annual dental appointment. Mm. 
-hmm. and it's just another example of you know it seems like a little thing but you think if you never went to the dentist between the ages of of naught and 18 and what a difference it would make to your life now and it's things like that that are really really vital I don't know if you saw, but this weekend Leeds was named as the uh, the happiest city, uh, the happiest core city um, in the UK. Um, and there was a real mention in there of actually about health and well-being and the mm. fact that Leeds have prioritised health and well-being um, and around that. But another of the things um, it mentioned was the opportunities for volunteering. They actually, they actually ranked Leeds um, really high um, about saying it's really important that people can take part in civic life. And, mm. being a- and again, it's that active partnership with people. Yeah. Um, and how do you think Leeds is managing that? Yeah, I think we've been really um, energetic around that agenda. And when we when the cuts started, we we had a real deep think about the role of local government and what we were here for. And there was a danger that if you were just negative and glass half empty about everything, then you would, you know, we knew people would get bored of that pretty quickly. And the fact remained that even after the cuts, we're still the biggest employer in local areas we're still the biggest procurer of services so the the impact that you can have is huge and we had this sort of um little equation we came up with that that local government needed to get more more enterprising Mm -hmm. through this period and we needed business to get more civic and the glue that would fit that together would be citizens becoming more engaged particularly working with charity sector third sector and, and I think, and we were going to set up a think tank after we'd done this piece of work, which is a really good piece of work, even though I say so myself, and it got a lot of national resonance. Um, we were going to set up a think tank and, you know, have a network of enterprising councils. And we ended up saying to ourselves, actually, we'd be better off just doing it and showing people what we meant by it. Mm-hmm. And so the, the volunteering element of what we did and the engagement element of what we did became really important because of that third area of how you engage people and things like the Tour de France were really important so it gave us that big dramatic moment where we got the tour makers you know to be part of that and people felt it when they came into the city and then the tour makers helped us with other things that we were doing locally Um, that built on things like the neighbourhood networks that we have in Leeds that are amazing Um, older people's charities that you know have an army of these volunteers who help people every day so yeah I I think it is to do with that and I think I'm really proud of the fact that Leeds has come out like that it doesn't surprise me because I know what a great place it is but it's we're not competitive at all honestly (laughs) but we love to beat Manchester on things like that yeah it's always good to beat Manchester yeah makes me happy um (laughs) but um so one of the things that working in a partnership like West Yorkshire and Harrogate is that sometimes it's a tension sometimes it's a dynamic between local and system um at that West Yorkshire level and how do you think we can better manage that dynamic between local and obviously local authorities in in the title for us and that wider working with partners on a bigger geography yeah, I think it's I think it's hard because people do engage with and understand what the Leeds footprint is or what the Bradford footprint is. They know they pay their council tax on that basis. They know that's the city they come from, if you like. So I think we 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 have a challenge to to get across to people what that wider footprint is and why it's that geography. But I, you know, I I do think it's right that we operate at that level because. Uh, people don't you know they don't sort of get to the edge of a of a administrative boundary and stop and say I can't go any further they they actually you know they the the health system works across and this health and care system works across that wider geography so it's right that we organize ourselves across that wider geography and the simple way I'm 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 a team sport person so I like I've always liked playing team sports and I, I think one of the good things about teams is that you one of the sayings you have when you're playing I play football quite badly um, and but one of the things the sayings in the football team is you know do your own job really well and then you know that everyone will all do better and I think there's a bit of you need a bit of both so we we all need to to make sure our own patch is working really really effectively but then we've also got to make sure that we're working with others in that wider that wider scheme of things and you know that there's a difference between the different parts of the system leeds has a very big hospital trust that does 
you know the specialist work on things like trauma and cancer treatment that we wouldn't do across the whole footprint Mm. and if if everybody tried to do that then all the money would be used up and we wouldn't have any anything for the people who needed it for maternity and for Mm. for uh, hip replacements and for um, the social care work that takes place in every part of every bit of the geography so it's like having a it's like having if you had 11 strikers and 11 strikers in a team or 11 goalkeepers however good they were you'd lose yeah. so i think it's that team ethic of all of us doing our job really well and and also the leads of this world uh, the bigger cities recognizing that the smaller places are really important and as valid as as we are as big cities if you're an individual who can't access the care or the health care that you need so I think that's that's what it's all about it's teamwork so uh, people might not be aware of your career journey um, can you tell me the story of how you became a leader um yeah by accident I would say I I, I mean I don't think anyone wakes up one morning and says I'm going to be a leader um, and people who do generally aren't leaders I would maybe say <laughs> controversially um, anyone who calls themselves an inspired leader is a little tip um, never believe it because uh, they're not the I, I think it's just you know you, you people ask me when they're going through the career graduates often ask me you know how how what should I do how do I do it and I think it's all about doing the job you've got at the moment as well as you can and then if you do that, people tend to give you more to do. And so, you know, I, I've just been in the right place in the right time a couple of times. Um, I got to work in the UN in the 90s on climate change agreements across the world by complete accident. But it, it gave me this fantastic um, insight into how the world works together and different perspectives from different cultures, which are really which was really powerful for me. I got to set up a new government agency at the end of the 90s when the Blair Brown government was coming in and and that allowed me to get promoted quite quickly into a leadership position. And I was probably too young, to be honest, in in some senses, to do a, a major... I was a chief exec when I was 37. But in another sense, it's very liberating at that age to be given a job like that because you you maybe don't have the fear factor that people do sometimes when they're right at the end of their career and they don't really want to mess it all up at the end so um so that was interesting and and then I got the job at Leeds um about nine years ago and came into local government and it was quite a shock to start with even though I'd worked with local government (laughs) closely um I used to leave the building physically in the first week because it was so massive and daunting just to get my head together properly but no I, I've I've enjoyed it and it's I, I still have the same friends I went to school with um, and they're not chief executives they're factory workers and butchers and they do all sorts of different things and all sorts of different jobs and I have the same you know we all treat each other the same um, with the same element of disdain, I've got to say, they treat me. Um, but no, I, I, I've i always been a... I go back to that team thing. I always respect everybody. And I think it's very important as a leader to recognise that the voice of somebody who's on reception or who's sweeping the streets or who's a social worker or a highways engineer is as important as the chief executives. And that's what yeah. you know I've tried to bring into the jobs that I do. Yeah. So I've often heard you say, um, you know, le- you, being a leader isn't a job title, um, so it's not it's not something you're given. Mm. When were you first conscious that people were kind of looking to you for leadership or seeing you as a leader or putting you into that role? Um, that's a good question. I when I, w- I was in the fast stream in the civil service, and um, and I I really hated the there was this sort of elitist culture to that group of um the way they ran that program and it was often i mean i went to i was lucky enough to go to oxford um so but it was a sort of oxbridge type um you know the worst stereotype of an oxbridge type mentality the the reason that i think people 
I first clocked people looking for me was when I did a bit of a mini rebellion against the uh, fast stream and went to see the head of the department. I, I actually emailed the head of the department and said, I don't think we should have a fast stream. I think we should have a single graduate programme. And he asked to meet me. Um, so I, had to, I, got, I got wheeled in to see this guy who's now Lord Turnbull. And um, and he was. I think he was quite amused by this northerner telling him to sort of dismantle the whole of Whitehall. But um, I had a load of people who wanted to come with me who were in the, you know, in the graduate scheme as well, and they had similar feelings. So I guess it was things like that where maybe I was prepared to speak out a little bit more. Mm. And um, I would also say I went. I was an early adopter on Twitter, and. Um, I so I got social media quite early and when you put yourself out there like that you sort of realize how important it is what you say and the way you project yourself and I I just have a very strong view that you should be yourself you know you shouldn't try and be someone you're not um and so that was something that I you know I sort of realized maybe at that point as well and this saying that you you spend your whole career trying to be listened to and then you get to be a leader or a chief exec or whatever and then people listen to you a bit too much yeah. so they take you really literally so you've got to be very careful sometimes about what you say and how you say things remember you coming to Leeds and, be, and being a very different type of, um, of chief exec of being you know that public facing um, of engagement and I think for many of us it gave us the confidence to bring forward lots of the things that we had hoped to be able to do but felt like we weren't allowed to do so I, I think a lot of the, the you know the, the marks of Leeds in the last few years have been able to see things like compassionate cities you know I, I'm not sure that the word compassion was ever heard in the first 10 years of my career um, and kindness and um, and working with people uh, on those issues. So how, for you, do you think leaders and leadership has changed during your career? Yeah, I think the command and control model and the sort of heroic leadership model is pretty, um, obviously, quite vogue nationally <laughs> at the moment. Um, but I don't think is the way to run organisations. I think that you... The way that you get things done are by creating a culture and a framework where people can work and then letting them get on and do that. And I think I'm here to support the rest of the organisation, not the other way around. And I think that's the way that you've got to flip the mod- the traditional model and work in a different way. The reason I like working in Leeds and Yorkshire is because y- you get told straight away if you're <laughs> sort of talking rubbish yeah. and if people really are honest with you and that suits me I quite like that I'm quite an open person Um, and you know I I think I also think leadership in our terms in local government is very very powerful if you can get it right where you get that connection between the political leadership and the um, the officer leadership and I often think that's something that's that's missed by people outside and so the compassionate city thing was you know, came principally from uh, Councillor Blake and you know the, the the administration who wanted to bring that in, but I think the kindness element of it is probably more me in terms of me articulating that a bit more and people finding that quite odd that um, a, a man and a you know a sort of these person in a leadership position would talk in those terms, yeah. and I, I think you know it's almost seen as a weakness to admit that you've got any weakness whatsoever and that you 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 should be focused on the softer in inverted commas side of things rather than the the things people can see and build and travel on and you know that's where health and social care is so so important because actually the thing that people will remember most about a pathway through our system is when that they got that bit of kindness yeah. and that bit of human interaction and the thing they will dislike more than anything and they'll hate and they'll tell everybody about is when they were treated like a tick box yeah. and when they were tri- when they were ignored and when they were you know they they were sort of just treated like a a widget in a system and i guess that's what i'm really bothered about bringing is bringing that human 
element back into leadership and getting people to see that that's actually what it's all about. I've heard you talk before about how, if we could change from being a local authority to being a local enabler and how we do that and the kind of people that you need in an organisation to do that kind of thing. So what are the kind of things that you are doing to bring people into leadership roles who might be from non-traditional backgrounds or from, from you know the non-male pale stale version um, of leadership mm. that we've saw in the past? I'm really proud of the fact that we've, we've moved a long way on um, gender representation and diversity in the um, senior cohort of the council um, in the last few years where there's more women in our what's called our best council leadership team than men now but there's a lot more work to do on things like BAME representation in at senior levels and making sure that you've got people with a disability being heard we've, we've done lots on LGBT plus I'm quite proud of the fact that we're now back on the Stonewall list and we are very active I think in that space and have some fantastic people working on the ground on it I think in terms of mental health, I think we've done a lot in terms of opening up views to to make it a much more part of the, you know, it being part of the furniture that we all talk about that. And I've had my own experiences of that with my mum in particular, who's bipolar. My dad was an alcoholic and I've talked a lot about that. And when I, you know, I was in care when I was a toddler because of that, but then got sorted out and we were fine. But, But a lot of people don't have that experience. But mental health issues are growing as an issue in our organisations in our city and the region and we've got to be able to recognise those things a lot more but it's also about the thing I love about local government is that it it does have people from every walk of society who work here and I think that's a great strength and and people have a passion for the place they're they're from or, or they live in and that that is very powerful and um, and so the more We're doing work to, you know, outreach work to get people to apply for the council from places like Hales and Chapel Town and more women to come into the wastes um, side of what we do, Um, you know, where we're trying to be very proactive to to make sure that we we reflect the city that we serve. Um, And that's the important thing for me. And um, again, you know, seeing care leavers working for us now, is um, is very powerful and a testament to what we need to do but there's always more to do on that agenda and I'm very very keen and ambitious that we become much better um, in that area. Yeah because uh, from my point of view I do think that when we in local government probably have got a lot to contribute to our um, colleagues in, in other parts of the health and care system. Um, I, will be, I will be honest and say some of the whitest rooms I've ever been in um, have been in the last year mm. working uh, with our colleagues in these partnerships and um, we don't talk about class as much as we possibly could but particularly in terms of patient representation again if we want to be um, a health and care system reflective of that actually things like um, carers um, and how we work and organise and, um, and I, think, I think that's something that local government's got a lot of strength in um, and that we can bring that to those conversations yeah definitely and I think the um, you know the, the elected members are very reflective of the population yeah. um, and same with the carers same with the third sector yeah. you know you tend to get that um, injection of um, extra diversity and, and of course it gives you the full picture you know that you just don't get if you don't have those people around the table so even more reason for us to do that and it's great that LTHT are working with us on helping attract more people from Lincoln Green the ward right next to the hospital and we've already got I think about 40 people who've got into jobs as a direct result of that it's just it's just the sort of thing we should be doing. motivates you and when do you feel that you're most inspired I think the uh, it's all about people for me so when I meet somebody who says actually you did that or we said that and I'm doing this now and it's making a difference to these people that's absolutely what it's all about for me um, it's very hard to know when you've succeeded as a chief exec and actually the real success is when the culture changes and culture is very hard to measure so it's those individual stories I think that uh, are the ones that motivate me and had one recently where there's you know somebody who's really helped um, somebody who was a care leaver and they've got a job and they're working for us in the social care side of the the organization and it's those things that are, are the biggest motivator for me. Fantastic. Who inspires you and who do you look up to? 
So I would say my mum inspires me because she has taken 16 tablets a day for um, how, how long is it now? It must be about um, 55 years and is, has got all has had like illness bingo she's got a full house she's had everything and she never complains and always has a smile on her face when I walk through the door she gives me a death stare when I've got to leave so um yeah it's it's my mum I think and um yeah I I I think it's you know I, for me family and friends are the foundation stone of your life and if you've got good people who don't care if you're on reception doing the bins social worker or chief exec that's that's the important thing and they're the people who I really care about and who are really important to me if you could work with anyone who would it be and why I nearly met Nelson Mandela in fact in within three months I nearly met Nelson Mandela Bill Clinton and Tony Blair and if you google me and um, the importance of failure then you'll know how that happened but yeah no Nelson Mandela I think Mm -hmm. he's uh, whenever I show anyone around the civic I always take them to the Lord Mayor bit of the organisation and it's got the people who've got the freedom of the city on the wall and I always point out Nelson Mandela because he was um, Leeds was a big part of the anti-apartheid movement Mm -hmm. and when he was in prison he said that he would visit Leeds if he got released and he did in 2001 and um, so I think as somebody who really genuinely did change the world, which is what I guess we're all trying to do in our little ways, um, I think it'd be him. This has been episode three of the We Work Together podcast. Thanks to Rachel Loftus and Tom Reardon, and thank you for listening. Join us again next time when we'll be joined by more partners who work together to improve health and care for people in West Yorkshire and Harrogate.